Suppose we're standing on top of a hill and launch a projectile through the air. The projectile moves freely, accelerating under gravity, and we neglect air friction. Now suppose we have two target objects also flying around. The target trajectories are arbitrary. Think of the targets as drones, which can move in any fashion at all. With its current aim, the projectile misses both targets. Let's watch again, noticing the projectile missed the targets. If we aim the projectile differently, we can ensure it hits one of the targets. But is it possible to launch the projectile so it intersects with both targets? So it'll be killing two drones with one stone, so to speak? To solve this problem seems to me a non-trivial challenge in mechanics. I spent a little time trying to solve it using a conventional algebraic approach, but I didn't succeed. But using an interface which builds in powerful ideas from mechanics will make some real progress. We won't solve the problem completely, but we will gain lots of understanding. As a warm-up, let's work through the case with just a single target. If you've ever spent much time throwing a ball, you know intuitively that it's always possible to hit such a target. It's great to have that everyday intuition, but it's also desirable to have a justification for the intuition based on the laws of mechanics. Building up our understanding of those laws ultimately leads to a deeper understanding of particle motion. So I'll switch now to showing a rough prototype interface where we attack the single target problem. Here it is. I've started out showing the stone, its launch velocity, and a single target object. We can edit the launch velocity and the trajectory changes. Let's see how the stone moves with the changed launch velocity. An elementary theorem of mechanics says that between any start point and any end point, there is always a range of trajectories. We can build this theorem into the interface. To see this, let's delete our trajectory, reselect the original start point, select a point on the target trajectory, and select a trajectory for the stone. Let's see how the stone moves along its new trajectory. The stone doesn't hit the target trajectory at the right time, but we can address that by changing the timing of the throw. Let's reset the time to the start, manually move to the time the target crosses the stone's trajectory, then stop, and then displace the stone forward in time. Informally, we're using the interface to throw the stone earlier in time. Now we rewind time everywhere so the stone goes back to the launch point, and then play the full trajectory, noticing that the stone does indeed hit the target. What we learn from this argument is that from any starting point, we can hit our target at any point along its trajectory. OK, let's return to our original problem, casting our projectile to hit not one, but two target objects. Let's remind ourselves of how the target objects move. To attack the problem, let's pick out one point on the trajectory of one target object. This point will do. And let's consider all trajectories for our stone that collide with the target at that point in time. We can play all the trajectories forward from the collision. There's a kind of wavefront of all possible trajectories emanating from the first target. If you're watching closely, you may have noticed that the wavefront collides with the second target. That tells us that there is, indeed, a trajectory intersecting with both target objects. Let's watch again carefully, since it happens quite quickly. Boom, there it is, the wavefront collides with the second target. The great thing is that most of the details of the trajectory of the second target don't matter to this argument. What matters is that the second target starts to what I'll call the southeast of the first target that is, in the region to the right of the bounding vertical line, and below this other bounding line. The reason is that the boundaries of the southeast region are asymptotes of the wavefront. The vertical line is an asymptote because the nearby trajectories arise when we hurl the projectile very high, and it comes hurtling down incredibly fast. The other bounding line is an asymptote because the nearby trajectories arise when we hurl the projectile very fast, almost directly toward the intersection point. Using these facts and the intermediate value theorem, it's possible to give a rigorous proof that the wavefront and the target collide. I won't go through those details, but the basic idea is that the wavefront completely encloses the region bounded by the asymptotes, and so must collide with the target at some point. One caveat to making the proof work is that the target's velocity must be bounded, so it can't run away too fast from the wavefront. But provided that's true, the target can't escape. The upshot of all this is that we've discovered something very interesting. Provided the targets have bounded velocity, and one is to the southeast of the other at some point, we can throw a stone so as to collide with both targets. 
This isn't a complete answer to the question, when can we ensure a projectile passes through targets to, through two targets? But it's a good start, a non-trivial insight, a small discovery.